Welcome to the Philippines Premier Motor Show. This is Autofocus. I'm Ray Louis Gamboa. Here's a menu of some of our features on this edition of your electronic magazine, exclusive to the automobile and its industry. Starting off with reviews of two vehicle models presently in the local market. A mid-size SUV from Kia, the Sorento 2.2 EX Automatic 4x4. And a luxury compact crossover from Mercedes-Benz, the GLB 200 AMB. Plus a feature-to-feature -feature comparison of two compact SUVs, the Hyundai Tucson GLS versus the JAC S4 Intelligent. On Autopedia, we'll talk about understanding your car's handling. And together with the latest news and developments in the local auto industry, you shall have the launch of ICER Brakes as our special feature. The next 60 minutes is all about the automobile. This is Autofocus, and we'll be right back after this short break. Welcome back to Autofocus, the automobile show. We start this edition of your electronic magazine with a review of one of the latest automobile models from Kia. Kia Philippines reports being encouraged by resurgence in sales in the final quarter of 2020. Led by the Soluto, the K2500, and the Stonic. Also padding its sales number is the Sorento its entry in the midsize seven-seater SUV market. Carview takes a look at one of its variants, the 2.2 EX Automatic 4x4. The midsize seven-seater sport utility vehicle market is quite crowded these days, with more entries expected to arrive this year. It is increasingly difficult to stand out in this saturated segment of the auto market, and automakers are resorting to equipping SUVs with the latest gadgetry and automotive technology that make driving and riding an SUV safer, more convenient, and fun. Kia is doing so with the Sorento, which at 4,800mm long, 1,890mm wide, and 1,685mm tall, fits squarely in the mid-size SUV category. The Sorento 2.2 EX Automatic 4x4 has a 2,780mm long wheelbase and sits 185mm off the ground on 18-inch alloy wheels wrapped by 235 60R18 tires. The Sorento doesn't dazzle with styling like its smaller sibling, the Stonic, but instead goes for the classic SUV look that should stand the test of time. Still, it comes with styling cues that make it unmistakably a Kia, particularly the chrome grille and headlamp design. The 4x4 variant features LED auto-leveling headlamps with auto light control, LED daytime running lights, and projection-type front fog lamps. Body color front and rear bumpers as well as the silver skid plate enhance the classic character of the Sorento. 
so does the tastefully chromed outside door handle and door garnish. The side view mirrors comes in the body color and with integrated turn signals. The mirrors adjust and fold electronically. Other exterior features include rear spoiler, high mount stop lamp, LED rear combination lamps, pole type antenna, and a power tailgate. These days must-haves for mid-sized SUVs include a smart entry system with push start button. Inside is a roomy cabin with three rows of leather upholster seats for seven. The driver's seat adjusts electronically eight ways and two ways for lumbar support. There's 320 liters capacity for luggage with all seats upright, 1,077 liters with third row seats folded, and 2,066 liters with both second and third row seats folded. The classy character of the Sorento's exterior styling extends into its elegant interior with its glossy black dashboard trim and satin chrome inside door handles. The instrument panel is handsomely laid out with standard speedometer, commoner, Rio stat controls, and a mono TFT LCD multifunction display. The four spoke leather upholstered steering wheel tilts and telescopes and features controls for audio, Bluetooth, and cruise control. The gear shift knob is also wrapped in leather. Complementing the smart entry system are power door locks with impact sensing function. Other standard features in the Sorento 4x4 include vanity mirrors on sun visors, day and night rear view mirrors, sunglass case, and cup holders on the front console, second row armrests and third row side trims, power outlets on the center fascia, and dual zone automatic air conditioning. The Sorento infotainment system features a 7-inch touchscreen, AM-FM radio, CD and MP3 player, USB and aux import, Bluetooth connectivity with voice control, and is compatible with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. It plays through 4 speakers plus 2 tweeters. The Sorento is powered by a 2.2-liter 4-cylinder double overhead cam diesel engine with common rail direct injection system and variable geometry turbocharger. The engine generates 200 PS and 441 Nm of torque from 1,750 to 2,750 RPM. On the Sorento 2.2 EX Automatic 4x4, all that power and torque is sent to the four wheels via an active on-demand four-wheel drive system with an 8-speed automatic transmission with Shiftronic. Stopping power comes from an all-wheel disc brake system. The Sorento suspension features McPherson struts and stabilizers in the front and a multi-link system in the rear. The Sorento 4x4 is equipped with various driver assistance technology including cruise control. Active and passive systems also come standard in the Sorento. These include front airbags, anti-lock brake system, brake assistance system, electronic stability control, vehicle stability management, and hill start assist control. The Sorento 2.2 EX Automatic 4x4 comes with a price tag of 2.195 million pesos. Does this make the Sorento a good value for money mid-size SUV with all its features? The latest auto industry news and developments right after this break. with the new Mitsubishi Expander Cross. Welcome back to Autofocus. And we now have the latest auto industry news. 
Maxxis Philippines has added a fifth member to its local lineup, the D60 Compact SUV. The Maxxis D60 arrives looking to challenge rivals for the title of best looking compact SUV in the crowded local market with styling based on the Maxxis Tarantula concept. It comes in two variants, the 5-seater 1.5T Pro and the 7-seater 1.5T Elite. Both are powered by a 1.5-liter turbocharged gasoline engine coupled to a 7-speed dual-clutch automatic transmission and generating 169 PS and 250 Nm of torque. Maxxis Philippines packed the D60 it brought into the country with a host of active and passive systems that include electronic stabilization program, electronic parking brake with auto hold, cruise control, front dual and side airbags, air reverse camera, a tire pressure monitoring system, rear parking distance control, with the Elite getting a front park distance control for good measure. Both offer much of the latest comfort, convenience, and power features expected to be competitive in class with the Elite getting the added entry and push start, leather seats, and power folding side mirrors. During the virtual media launch of the D60, Maxxis unveiled its new 5-point vehicare program that makes ownership of Maxxis vehicles more convenient and affordable. The 5-point vehicare program includes the 5-year warranty or 100,000 km program, 5-year emergency roadside assistance, parts management system that makes part stocks availability up to 5 months, enhanced service quality for on-site and virtual product support, and home service or pickup and delivery, and low-cost maintenance that makes every Maxxis vehicle you buy 22% more affordable versus other brands of over 5 years. A study commissioned by Nissan reveals that Filipinos in other Southeast Asia countries are highly enthusiastic about owning an electric vehicle. The study, entitled The Future of Electrified Vehicles in Southeast Asia, conducted by research and consulting firm Frost & Sullivan, showed that 64% of vehicle owners in six Southeast Asian countries are now willing to consider owning electric vehicles. The study polled 3,000 car drivers in selected cities in Indonesia, Malaysia, Singapore, Thailand, the Philippines, and Vietnam to understand their awareness, attitudes, behavior, and perceptions towards electrified vehicles. The results of the study were presented during a virtual gathering of industry leaders, government officials, and media held recently called Nissan Futures Electrification and Beyond. According to the study, 45% of Filipino car drivers said they would consider an electrified vehicle, defined in the study as plug-in hybrid or solely battery-powered electric vehicle, as their next car purchase within the next three years. Filipino drivers who participated in the study cited tax breaks, charging infrastructure in residential areas, and priority lanes for EVs as top incentives for switching to electric vehicles. Isuzu vehicle owners in Bacoor Cavite will soon have a nearby dealership and service center to cater to their needs. Isuzu Bacoor is expected to open in March of this year along Molino Boulevard in Barangay Bayanan in Cavite. The construction of this dealership demonstrates our dedication and commitment to expand our network to be able to service more customers nationwide. Isuzu Bacoor will be our dealership number 46. The latest in Isuzu Philippines' network of dealerships will showcase Isuzu's latest iOS showroom design with a spacious showroom that can accommodate two light commercial vehicles and two commercial vehicles. This will uh, have the latest standards of Isuzu in terms of service, showroom, and parts. The dealership will have a service shop that can cater to vehicles from the smallest Isuzus to big tractor head trucks. Isuzu Philippines and the Isuzu Automotive Dealership Inc. or IADI recently signed the contract for the soon-to-open Isuzu Bacoor dealership in a simple ceremony held at the Isuzu headquarters in Binyan, Laguna. IADI is also planning to open a second dealership in Cavite before the end of the year as part of a two-pronged strategy to capture one of the fastest-growing markets in the region. Isuzu Bacoor will serve customers in the northern part of Cavite, while the planned second dealership in Dasmarinas will cater to southern municipalities. Toyota Motor Philippines is offering a new service that will help companies monitor movement of their fleet units. The Toyota Fleet Connected service will use an automotive GPS system designed specifically for Toyota vehicles to assist business owners and operators in managing vehicle assets. The system can track movement of Toyota Fleet units and provide such information such as current location, chip monitoring, and vehicle mileage. 
According to Toyota, the Fleet Connected service can even recognize unusual driver behavior. It can record each time a vehicle enters and exits a virtual boundary through the geofencing function and will report device disconnection and tampering through its unplug detection feature. The data about the fleet are instantly transmitted from the device to Toyota's G Fleet system, allowing businesses to have a full view of their fleet anytime, anywhere. This new service is compatible with Toyota's best selling fleet vehicles such as the Vios, a Nova, Hi Ace, Hilux, Fortuner, Avanza, Corolla Altis, Rush, and Wego from 2016 to present models. Those are the latest news and developments in the automotive industry. We shall take another short break. Stay with us. I'll be right back. I think my dad is secretly a superhero. He's the coolest, smartest, strongest person alive. No matter where we go, he always makes sure I feel safe. And he isn't afraid of anything. My dad likes to call that the power to lead. I call it his superpower. Montero Sport. Elevate your journey. Drive your ambition. Mitsubishi Motors. Welcome back to this edition of Auto Focus, the country's premier automobile TV and online magazine. Here's our feature-to-feature -feature comparison of the latest automobile models belonging to the same category on Head to Head. Compact or small SUV crossovers are helping drive sales during the pandemic. Head-to-head -head fits two good options in a spec-to-spec -spec compare. The Hyundai Tucson 2.0D GLS CRDI Automatic Transmission 2-Wheel Drive and the JAC S4 Intelligent. The Hyundai Tucson has been in the local market a long time now. The small or compact SUV was among the vehicles that helped build strong local acceptance for Korean automobiles. The JAC S4 is a newcomer in the market, one of the horde of SUVs and crossovers coming over from China that local distributors hope will win better acceptance for automobiles made from the mainland. The Hyundai Tucson 2.0D GLS CRDI Automatic 2-Wheel Drive is 4,480mm long, 1,850 millimeters wide and 1,660 millimeters tall with a 2,670 millimeters long wheelbase. It sits 172 millimeters above the ground on 18-inch alloy wheels wrapped by 225-55R18 tires. Exterior features include projector-type headlamps, front fog lamps, hood insulator, electric foldable and heated side view mirrors with integrated turn signs, chrome outdoor handles, roof rails, mud guards with your spoiler with high mount stop lamps. The JAC S4 is 4410 mm long, 1800 mm wide, and 1660 mm tall, with a 2620 mm long wheelbase. It rides tall on 17-inch alloy wheels wrapped by 215-50 R17 tires. The JAC S4 intelligent exterior comes with halogen height adjustable headlamps with automatic light function. LED daytime running lights, cornering lamps, 
and front and rear fog lamps. Distinctive features include the six-sided grille, slim dark air dam, the over fender and side cladding, shark fin roof antenna, roof racks, and a power moon roof. The Hyundai Tucson is powered by a 1,995cc CRDI EVGT diesel engine that generates 185 PS at 4,000 revolutions per minute and 402 Nm of torque from 1,750 to 2,750 RPM. The power is transmitted to the front wheels via an 8-speed automatic transmission with drive mode select. Stopping power comes from a brake system that uses discs on all wheel. The suspension features front McPherson struts and a multi-link system in the rear. The JCS4 is powered by a 1.5-liter turbo IVVT gasoline engine that generates a maximum 147 horsepower and 210 Nm of torque. The engine drives the front wheels via a continuously variable transmission. The Hyundai Tucson 2.0 DGLS comes with a smart key with push start system. It can sit five passengers, including driver, comfortably in seats upholstered in fabric. The driver's seat can be adjusted electronically while the rear splits 60-40 and features a folding center armrest with cup holders. The standard instrument cluster features a 3.5-inch mono TFT LCD info display with trip computer. On the overhead console are a map lamp and sunglass holder, while the center console doubles as storage box with armrests and cup holders. The Tucson has power steering our windows and door locks in an air-conditioned system with manual controls and rear vents. The leather-wrapped steering wheel tilts and telescopes and has controls for audio and Bluetooth. The infotainment system comes with 7-inch floating-type audio display unit, aux-in, and USB portals, Bluetooth connectivity. The JCS4 Intelligent comes with smart keyless entry and push start button. The cabin can accommodate five passengers comfortably in leather upholstered seats. The driver can adjust his seat electronically. The multifunction steering wheel tilts to get the optimum driving position. The LED instrument panel provides three modes for displaying S4 status and performance. Comfort and convenience features include remote controlled windows, automatic climate control, rear windshield defoggers, and heated power adjustable side mirrors that automatically fold when the vehicle is locked. Aside from the mandated seat belts, the Hyundai Tucson 2.0 GLS is equipped with a number of active and passive safety features that include dual airbags, anti-lock brake system, electronic stability control, hill start assist, downhill brake control, immobilizer, safety window. Added for safety and security in the JAC S4 Intelligent are dual airbags, seat belts with reminders for all five passengers, isofix, and immobilizer. It is also equipped with anti-lock brake system, electronic stability control, hydraulic brake assist, brake override system, hill start assist, reverse video images and 360-degree panoramic images, and overspeed alarm. Automakers and distributors are becoming more imaginative and strategic at mixing and matching the number and types of smart technologies and comfort and convenience features in SUVs or crossovers and other types of automobiles, all the while calculating price points to make attract buyers. Motul is the most trusted motor oil of the top teams competing in some of the world's most grueling race competitions. The WRC, the WTCC, and the Japan GT. Motul is the only 100% fully synthetic motor oil in the market. It has antioxidation properties that prevent premature thickening and aging due to thermal stress and guarantees total engine protection. 
For more information about Motul engine oils, visit www.motul.com.ph. Welcome back to Autofocus, the country's premier automobile news and features electronic magazine. Our special feature is next. Do you own a European brand car? Do you know that chances are great that your brakes, particularly the brake pads, were made in Spain? This can also be true for many Japanese vehicles. This heretofore unheard of fact should be common knowledge soon. Find out why in our special feature focusing on auto performance pH, introducing ICER brake pads locally. Auto Performance PH has announced that it is now the official distributor of brake pads made by ICER Brakes, a company based in Spain. The announcement was made during a Zoom conference with members of the motoring media by Francis Aguila of Auto Performance PH. Also at the conference was Miguel Sancho, expert manager for ICER Brakes, who made a presentation about ICER, its founding, how it grew to become the leading independent manufacturer of brake pads in Europe distributing 25% of production under the ICER brand and supplying the rest to private labeling customers, including car manufacturers and manufacturers of brake systems, and the move to extend ICER's reach in Asia. ICER is a company that has been always focused very much on manufacturing, more than marketing. Maybe that is why we were not so present in the Philippines uh, market. Um, ICER has been always focused on, as I said, manufacturing and uh, our main uh, worry was to, to have an excellent product, a top product. The clients we have are vehicle builders, 10%. Um, we are talking about, uh, we used to manufacture 100% of the range of uh, Renault of Montreal, which was an OE as second brand. We are not OE manufacturer, we are OES second brand. We manufacture for companies such as Renault, their brand Mojo, which is uh, an oil maker. We manufacture for Mitsubishi, we manufacture for Nissan, okay, we manufacture for Saab. Obviously, ICER, since we are a European company, we've been focused uh, historically more on the European market. Even we, our development now lately in the last years uh, in the Asia Pacific area is been very important, but actually we even have relationship with uh, brake system manufacturers in uh, Asian. I mean, I cannot, for, for these uh, the non disclosure agreements, I cannot tell you which companies, but uh, Korean braking system manufacturers. I mean, we have very close relationship. Uh, that's why we are extending very much our portfolio to covering a full, for almost fully the Asian, and Jap I mean, the Asian uh, car park, especially Korean and Japanese. I would say that we have 85, 90% uh, coverage of the uh, Asian car park, the same way that we have 99% of the European car park. Aside from taking pride in R&D initiatives to develop quality brake pads and parts and in ecologically sustainable manufacturing processes, it produces copper-free friction materials. Sancho also revealed telling trade secrets. Out of the four main manufacturers of uh, braking system, we supply uh, brake pads for two of them. The main four are Bosch, TRW, ATE, and uh, um, Brembo. Equally telling for auto performance was how Sancho's upfront about the fact that it was ICER Brakes which first approached the company to become its authorized distributor in the country. A cold call to auto performance PH even during the lockdowns. 
actually during the lockdown and I remember calling out of performance, not pick, not even picking up the phone and we're finally closed. they realized <laughs> we that <still> I... Closed. <laughs> yeah, so it's been like that and it's just that uh, um, the, the, the way we work is we, uh, as I mentioned during my introduction, we are not Coca-Cola, we look for uh, uh, Countrywide partners, we usually prefer to focus our activity on one or two partners per country, not to spread our efforts and, and to really, and to provide a, a fair a business, a profitable business for our partners. And uh, well, I think that the same way we were looking for something like that, uh, they were looking for some, uh, maybe uh, this, my, my, my point of view was that, this was seconded by Aguila, who said Auto Performance PH saw that icer brakes were perfect for the Pinoy car owner. He actually messaged me through LinkedIn. So for those of you guys who uh, don't, who aren't active on LinkedIn, it actually works. So uh, after yeah, that, yeah, like Miguel much. said, we uh, we set up a Zoom meeting and we just, and, you know, and uh, through the course of the conversation, we felt that we were. Uh, we felt that each uh, each company, ICER and, and Auto Performance, it made sense for us to have a partnership. Auto Performance PH is continuing with a formula that has seen it grow to become one of the top automotive aftermarket product distributors in the Philippines. And starting this year, um, we will we actually will be importing ICER brakes and uh, distributing it nationwide as uh, ICER's official distributor. And um, I wanted to show you guys a few things that we have uh, in store for you, or in store for the brand, I should say. And so one of them really is uh, the new website. So um, as you guys know, we're going into a digital age, and um, you know all these. Uh, all motorists, almost all motorists, if not all motorists, uh, they're very tech savvy already. And so we made this website specifically to assist customers in making an informed decision when choosing brake pads for their cars. And so we highlight things like um, like ICER's products, which as uh, Miguel said earlier, its main product really is um, OE spec brake pads, uh, um, which we will definitely focus on and we think are a perfect a product for the Philippine market. We'll also eventually be carrying a full range, their full range, for example, brake discs, brake shoes, and, uh, and other accessories. And so this uh, this section will, you know, will uh, provide information to customers who want to know more uh, about the products. We also have an FAQ section, um, again, specific for helping these customers, these, you know, more advanced, more, um, technically knowledgeable customers, but you know, who want to look for really good information about the brake system. Uh, and not necessarily it's about ICER. For example, uh, in this uh, in this uh, FAQ section, uh, we tell them when to replace brake pads. So if you have a question, how do you, when is it time to replace brake pads? It's here. Um, they might all ask other questions specific to the brand. Like, for example, why should I choose ICER? What makes ICER uh, a good, you know, uh, the, the the right choice for me and my car. And so, um, again, this website really is dedicated uh, to be a knowledge base for uh, motorists so that they can make informed decisions for uh, maintenance of their vehicles. Our main job really as ICU distributor is, well, uh, distribution. And so we really want to focus on ICER's main strengths, which one of them is really OE quality, premium quality, as Miguel said, ICER supplies uh, two of the four biggest brake companies in the world. It's not just about having the best products uh, out there. For the Philippines, you know, we have to have something that's affordable. We're uh, unfortunately in a pandemic now, which hurts um, disposable income even more. And even in the best of times, uh, Filipinos are very price conscious. Um, and now we're a combination of price conscious and quality conscious. but. In ICER's case, you can have both great quality and great prices with, you know, brake pad sets starting at just 1,400 pesos, which is incredible value for money. Applications are also for Japanese, Korean, American, and European cars. 
I would say we have about nine, almost 90% of all cars running in the Philippines are in the iShare catalog. And initially we'll have about 80 to 100 applications available, uh, but we will be constantly expanding our range as we go along. We're also really active with automotive community uh, and that's really part of our DNA. You know, we've had partnerships with everyone from Toyota, uh, Tuasun Racing, uh, the Ramirez School, um, you know, even minor partnerships or minor, uh, you know, uh, minor work with uh, players like Mazda or Volkswagen um, and a lot of other events. And we can, we're going to be continuing that uh, as part of our platform with ISO. So everything from events, technical trainings, uh, you know, car club support and all these other things uh, will be definitely uh, be putting as part of our portfolio to inform the customer that they have this option of ISO brakes, which is, you know, which has a great combination of quality and price. ICER brake pads should now be available in automotive repair shops nationwide and via the new ICER Lazada stores beginning this month of February. The products themselves will be available beginning February from any one of our over 100 dealers nationwide, all the way from, you know, from the northern tip of Luzon all the way down to Mindanao, uh, and online through, well, uh, initially through Lazada and possibly other platforms uh, as we go along and as we, uh, as we see uh, a need arise. What are the top global manufacturers of brake systems that use ICER products? What are the car marks that can use top quality ICER OE spec brand products? ICER's arrival is certainly creating a buzz. I think my dad is secretly a superhero. He's the coolest smartest, strongest person alive. No matter where we go, he always makes sure I feel safe. And he isn't afraid of anything. My dad likes to call that the power to lead. I call it his superpower. Be it fine dining, a romantic garden wedding, a relaxed casual meal, or an important business event, Illustrado is the place to go. Aside from its famed paella, the Illustrado restaurant, which is located within the history-laden walled city of Intramuros, is also the favorite destination of food gourmands for its famous calios and lengua and other classic gustatory offerings. Illustrado restaurant, only for the foodies. Welcome back. We have more cars for you to know and appreciate as we have our second car review this week. Mercedes-Benz has a large inventory of luxury crossovers and SUVs of various sizes, powertrains and trims to choose from. Mercedes-Benz Philippines carries a comprehensive list of these SUV crossovers, including the Mercedes-Benz GLB 200 AMG.
If you are looking for a luxury compact SUV with the cachet of a German mark, the GLB 200 AMG deserves a closer look and a test drive at your nearest Mercedes-Benz Philippines dealership and showroom. Know more about your car and how to take care of it here on Autopedia. Okay, now we're going to talk about handling. And by handling, I don't mean race car handling, which 99.99% of us will never do anyway. What we're going to be talking about is how the car handles normally on the road. So you can go to YouTube and then there are lots of videos explaining what camber is, what caster is, and all of this stuff. But what we're going to be talking about is a bit more practical. How to know if your car needs alignment or not. And how to check if the alignment shop did a proper and correct job after you have it aligned. So, so if they did a sucky job, you can always tell them that, hey, car's not aligned, it's a back job. The easiest test that anybody can do, actually, you do it unconsciously. You always have one hand on the wheel to keep the car going straight because, as you can see here, we're going to go straight. The second that you let go of the steering wheel, and we're about to crash into the Jeep. <laughs> <laughs> that's how you know your car needs alignment. And that's also the test after you have your car have alignment done in the alignment shop. You let it go. If it tracks straight, then job's well done. If it doesn't, then back job. Actually for alignment, the biggest factor that they adjust to make the car go straight or not is toe in and toe out. <laughs> not, not camber per se. Camber relates more to how the car turns, which we'll explain in a bit. We're going to explain the terms with actual wheels rather than a diagram because having actual stuff is a lot easier to visualize. The most common that you hear is camber alignment. That simply means labas o pasok yung wheel. So this is negative camber. This is positive camber. Almost all cars now don't have positive camber anymore. A lot of the cars now, when you buy it stock straight from the factory, have a very, very slight negative camber both on the front and in the back why they do this because when you have a car that's negatively cambered and then when you corner the wheels actually straighten out so we're gonna exaggerate it a bit so you have a car that says negative camber like this when you corner weight shifts out the wheel gets straighter so there's more grip on the road and when you turn the other way the same thing happens weight is on this wheel this wheel gets straighter so there's more grip on this one so that's what camber is the next question is hindi ba mapuputput yung gulong ko dahil naka negative camber ako the answer is no <laughs> the amount of camber is very very slight usually a degree is a lot so it's anywhere from half a degree to one degree that's the stock setting of, of almost all cars now uh, there are some rare cars like Mazda 3's have about a degree and a half, sometimes two degrees of negative camber at the back. And by the way, that's what makes the car handle so well because of that extreme negative camber at the back. If you hear, um, hang around with car people often enough, you'll hear na napuput put yung loob ng gulong ko. It's because of if you have too much negative camber like this, only this part is on the ground. This part here does not rub the ground. So the end result is you get inside tire wear, which means it's napuput put sa loob, sa loob. And since you're a cheapskate, you rotate mo na lang yung goma para maputput naman yung labas. <laughs> but as we showed earlier, if your car goes straight or not when you let go of the steering wheel, a lot of it has to do with toe in and toe out. And then for this one, we need to have a shot from above the tire. <laughs> this is toe in. This is toe out. Again, the stock setting is almost always slightly slightly towed in from the factory and it's pretty easy to see if you have an old uh, transformers toy that with one wheel wobbled like that obviously it will not go straight it's wobbled like this it will also not go straight if it's straight like this with very very slightly pointing inward then this will actually go straight when you roll it <laughs> having the opposite of like that this will also go straight but it will be very wiggly 
So most of the adjustments when you're having a car aligned to go straight is actually the toe in and toe out. The third term that you will hear is caster alignment. Uh, most of the cars now, we don't really adjust this anymore because there's not much to adjust and adjusting it doesn't really affect anything unless you're racing. So let's forget about that one. So the two important things to remember are toe in, toe out, and then camber alignment for tire wear. But once again, the best test, if your alignment job is great or not, let go of the steering wheel. That advice also same goes for people who install lowering springs. They always ask, do you need an alignment after you install lowering springs or any other suspension work? Same principle goes. Let go of the steering wheel. If your car go runs straight, you don't need an alignment. If it veers left and right at Kumakabig, then you need an alignment. That's how handling is done for us normal people 99.99% of the time and that's all what we need to be concerned about. Yes, you can have lowering springs, better shock absorbers, but the thing is for normal people driving on normal roads, handling is how straight your car goes. And when you ask it to turn, and it turns and it's not malikot, it's not all over the road. That is handling for the common person. <laughs> That's our feature on Autopedia this week. Taking care of your ride has been made easier. And that's Autofocus this week. We hope you have found this edition of your electronic automobile magazine informative as well as entertaining. You can also check us out on our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram accounts. On behalf of my dad, Butch Gamboa, this has been your host, Ray Louis Gamboa. Please stay safe and healthy.